In a recent video, I demonstrated and analyzed 20 runouts on my 9-foot table with a standard 8-ball break. Some people commented that the runouts looked too easy with no real problems to solve because the breaks were too effective. In response, I did another video demonstrating and analyzing runouts using the second ball break instead on my 9-foot table. This break choice is not good on the 9-foot table, with balls not pocketed on the break as often, and with greater chances for clusters and problems to solve. I showed 20 more runouts in that video, and people still thought they were too easy and asked that I do some runouts on a bar box where things would be tougher and more interesting. Your wish is my command, since I aim to swerve. In this video, I show 15 bar box runouts from a recent recording session. As with the previous videos, these racks were not consecutive. If I could routinely string multiple groups of 20 or 15 break and runs, I would be a world beater on the Pro Tour. I instead picked the racks that I thought would be the most interesting to discuss and watch. I provide detailed analysis and advice for the first five racks, explaining my choices and mistakes, and then I just show the remaining ten without discussion. I pause the video briefly after each break so you can study the layout and decide which ball group you would choose and how you would run them. If you need more time to study the layout, just pause the video. If you disagree with any of my ball group, shot, or pattern choices, please post comments with minute-second timestamps and explain what you would have done differently. One good thing about a second ball break is when you don't make a ball, it often leaves a tough runout for your opponent, like this. I don't have a shot at a stripe other than the risky jump at the 13, so I decide to go with solids. Unfortunately, the 2 and 5 don't have pockets and options on the 1 are limited. I decide to start with the 4 to leave an angle on the 6 to break out the 5 as soon as possible. Here I'm visualizing the tangent line. I want to stun forward slightly so I can hit the bottom side of the 5 so the cue ball will come out for the 7 next. With a good hit, I might even send the 9 up table to improve the 2 ball situation. In retrospect, I probably should have used slower speed on that shot because I could have created more problems by moving balls around up table. After the 7, I would like to pocket the 3 and send the 5 into the 11 to break out the 2. The angles for everything look good. A controlled stun back off the 7 leaves the perfect angle. Here, I'm visualizing the ghost ball position and carom direction to see where the 5 will hit the 11. The angle looks perfect to clear out the 11 and the 2. I am using draw to play for a shot at the 1 in the side next. That worked out well. Now I just need to stun over to the short side of the two and I should be out. I came up a little short, but even long tough cuts like this are high percentage on a small bar box with forgiving pockets. I didn't know exactly where the cue ball 11 and 8 would end up, but sometimes you need a little luck. Well, I got luck in the <laughs> I thought about just rolling this, but I didn't want to risk getting hooked behind the 10 or going too far. The ideal cue ball path would be into the line of the 8 like this, but I didn't want to risk using side spin with a slightly elevated cue and a long shot. I instead decided to draw across the table toward the 13. I didn't draw that as much as I expected, but my speed was good. If you are wondering what the piece of tissue paper is doing on the table, see my recent cheat code video linked in the video description and pinned comment. I like solids better here, since the 10 and 11 are in tough positions. The 6 is also a problem ball, although it does go in the upper corner. I can also move the 13 or 11 now with an elevated draw shot on the 5 to free up the 6 more. Now the rack is relatively easy. Often, one well played shot like this can transform a challenging rack into an easy one. 
I generally don't like leaving a ball in the middle of the table as the key ball, but the one goes in five pockets, and a stop shot on the one leaves the eight perfect on the side. I decide to play for the one in the upper left corner. Here, I'm just checking the natural angle direction and judging the speed I need to get straight on the one, but almost any angle on the one would work. I like stripes better because the 1 is in a tough spot. The 10 is also awkward, but it does go in the upper left corner with a wide shape zone. The 14 and 15 are a little awkward, but I can easily bump one or both balls, or play the combo. I decide to clear the group of balls at the bottom of the table first. Here, I'm deciding what angle I want on the 12. My plan is to leave it straight so I can draw up to the short side of the 10. I went a little past my target, but I think I can draw into the 1. With a little less speed or a little more backspin, that would have been perfect. That was kind of a bad roll, but luckily the 10-15-14 combo is possible. I just need to use a little cut and right spin to get the right line, and I need to elevate to avoid a possible double hit. Honestly, that was probably a double hit since the cue ball went forward of the tangent line, but that would be a tough foul to call since the action of the cue ball wasn't far from what would be expected with a clean hit. Now I have the out. I overhit that a little, but I wanted to make sure I would be able to roll forward on the 15 to get shape on the 11. I underhit that a little, but these pockets play big with a shot like this, so it shouldn't be a problem, and shape on the 8 and the side is natural going straight across off three cushions. Here, the only reasonable shots available are the 6 and 11. The 11 is a little tough, and the 8 has limited access for stripes, so I decide to go with solids. The shape zone for the 2 in the corner is tight, but I can easily get short side shape off the 7 or 4. The 1 and 3 are tied up, but I can throw the 1 in off the 3. There, I was trying to go through the gap to the 4 or 7 to clear the balls at the bottom of the table first, but I hit the 6 too full and bumped into the 15. I could pocket the tough 5 and break out the 3 and 1, but I decided to carry them off the 3 with left spin to throw the 1 into the corner. I was a little concerned about a double kiss, but I didn't think it posed a problem. As with all shots with side spin, I used the System for Aiming with Side Spin, or SAWS, to get an accurate aim. See the link in the video description or pinned comment for more information. I am also using Slow Speed Stun to get maximum throw. I also hope to get a shot on the 2 next. Here, I decide to stun forward to leave the 7 as straight as possible to draw off the rail since stripes make all other pass up table tight. That's perfect for draw with a little right spin to head up for the 3 or 5. I should have used a touch of right spin to get a straighter shot at the 5, but I'm okay.
solids would be tough here, with the limited options on the 3, and with the 6 and 7 presenting a challenge, especially with the 13 and 15 limiting access. The natural pattern is to clear the ball grouping at the head of the table first. I could play to either side of the 14, but I decide it would be easier to guarantee easy shape on the 8 by playing the 14 in the bottom right corner since the 3 can help hold the cue ball for the 8. Here, I'm checking the angle I want on the 13. I just need to stun forward just past the line of the shot. With the 3 as a stopper, almost any angle in the 14 is fine. I just need to make sure I get a look at the 14 past this line to clear the 3. Here are the remaining 10 racks shown at fast speed with a little background music for your listening pleasure. Again, please post comments with minute-second timestamps and explain what you would have done differently. If you watched closely, you will notice a few mistakes, some poor choices, and a little luck. Enjoy! I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to see more videos like this with run out commentary and instruction, see the playlist linked in the video description or pinned comment. And if you really want to master this great game of 8-ball, check out the video encyclopedia of 8-ball, also linked. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.